right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're gonna to be painting a scene from Buenos Aires, Argentina. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm gonna put my reference photo over here on the right hand side so you can take a look. What we're gonna be doing for this photo or for this painting is a little bit different where <clears throat> I'm really just using the reference photo as an inspiration for the architecture in my very rough sketch here. In the reference photo, the building is front lit, but in our painting, I'm gonna be switching that to back lit. With watercolor, that's typically a much easier sort of, um, I guess, vantage point to paint. And so we wanna make this as, as easy as possible. Now, we're gonna be doing something just a little bit different too, where you'll notice I haven't drawn any figures or cars or anything down here. And we're gonna be abstracting almost all of that in as, as kind of a drill just to get better at painting more loose and, and taking what watercolor gives us. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my paper here, but I'm going to only wet about halfway down. I want to leave the lower half of my paper dry because that's where I'm going to start leaving some gaps and things when we get down to this sort of street line. Um, I'm going to be leaving some gaps of light so that we can then sort of create some things later on. So let's grab a brush here. And I've got some cobalt blue. Let's see a little cerulean in there, some ultramarine, just mixing up a cool color. Let's get a little bit more cerulean in there. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come through here and just move the brush around. And since our paper's already, already wet, <clears throat> I'm gonna let that, that water do the work for us here. I'm gonna let it spread that out and create a sky all on its own, okay? Just like that. As I move down towards the building here, we're gonna be repainting this through our second wash, but I do wanna just go ahead and warm it up just a touch. Neutralize that just a little bit. There we go. All right, so. As I come down here to this kind of street level, I wanna start thinking about highlights and things that I can leave, right? So for all those little gaps of light <clears throat> that I'm gonna leave behind, they could be windshields of cars, the tops of, of people's shoulders. So I'm just gonna start kind of, I'm gonna start just working through here, kind of creating some rectangles and things and really just letting my brush kind of work through the area here. All right, let's draw some vertical lines. Again, all I'm trying to do here is just leave some white paper that I can create cars and things with later on. And we'll see how this works out. This isn't something I normally do, but it's a really good drill for learning how to take advantage of the sort of imperfections that you get in your paintings. A lot of times I see beginners trying to draw and paint every little perfect thing when you need to just sort of let watercolor do its thing. All right, now I'm gonna lighten this up just a little bit here, so I'm gonna add some water. And as I get closer to the bottom of my paper, I'm gonna get thicker with my pigment here. I'm gonna keep it, yeah, let's go cool. That'll be fun. We'll cool it down here at the bottom. Pulling some neutral tints, yep, right like that, okay? All right, so we've got a decent start here. <clears throat> I am going to take my palette knife here, and you know what, maybe we'll scratch in. It might be fun to have some type of, um, of an umbrella or something over here. So I'm just gonna make a lighter area, and then let's take some orange some type of a warm kind of bright color. And we'll see how this works. We might use it, we might not, <clears throat> but we'll put it there. All right, and so now I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna be back in just a minute to start our next wash. Something I might do right here though, let's see. It's too wet. I kinda wanna scratch some perspective lines here. 
and something else. I'm just looking at, <clears throat> I don't like this perfect line here. I want to darken that up a little bit there. I think that's better. I don't want too many white areas, but I think that looks good. Let's see if I can dry this up just a touch. Dry the bottom of that tape there. Let's just draw, there we go. Maybe something like that. There we go. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're back, ready to start our second wash. As you can see, I wanna point out how nice this sky has turned out. And with skies, the simpler you work, the better they're gonna turn out. All we did was pre-wet that sky, mix a bluish color, and then just kind of move our brush very quickly through the area. And you notice we've got this these beautiful soft white accents as if there are clouds and things up there. It's, it's a really easy way to paint a sky where we let the medium do the work for us. Anytime we can do that, the better our painting is going to turn out. All right, so let's get to work <clears throat> on our buildings. So I'm mixing up something as on the neutral on the neutral side but I'm going to I'm going to warm it up a bit and I'm going to spray just a little water on the paper just to get it just a little damp to help the paint move around now I said I was going to keep it warm but you know what we're going to start with this tower here which is a bit further in the distance and I want to cool that down anytime you've got objects that are pushed back you want to try to have a little bit of a cool tone to them. It tends to help push them back. All right, I'm gonna make a mark and just kind of see what I think here. I think that looks okay. It's maybe a little bit dark, but you gotta remember this is gonna dry lighter. All right, and so above all else when we're painting, I want to be able to paint quickly. Right, those fast brush movements are what give your painting life, right? It's hard to paint energy without having energy in your brush strokes, all right? That confidence and those, those quick movements will show through more than you can imagine. All right, I'm gonna darken things up for the top here. I'm gonna try to get that in one kind of move. Again, it's okay if I leave little gaps of light. <clears throat> it's going to help create some illusion of detail. I'm going to reach right up there and get some dark paint just to work on the on the top tower portion here. All right. Maybe a few little kind of blobs and things up there. Again, just moving the brush quickly, not really painting any one thing in my mind. I'm just, just moving along, letting watercolor do what it needs to do. All right, I'm gonna warm this up. <clears throat> We're gonna darken it up. We're gonna start on our main building here. Now, something I wanna do, I wanna leave a gap between that building in the rear and this one that's up front here, just to kind of give the accent of maybe a roof line. Yeah, that looks nice. I've got a little white space over here. I'm just going to put some water there and let it kind of kind of bleed over. All right. Now, we may be a little bit too warm here. All right, I want to have that contrast from the building behind, but it's still got to be realistic. So we're going to, I'm going to try to neutralize it a little bit. That's better. All right. And again here. When I'm working my brush, when I'm when I'm getting ready to do a roof line here, I'm going to move that brush very quickly. All right, it's going to help lead to a more interesting and energy-driven shape. All right, let's do... I want to do some kind of a f more fun color for the dome. Let's pull some lavender down. Okay. Do something like that, I think. Maybe clean that up a bit. Yeah, that looks nice. 
I'm gonna spray a little water on this to keep it alive. Remember, the only time we can work on our paintings or sort of edit things that we've already done is while they're still wet. And so <clears throat> you wanna spray it every once in a while just to kind of keep it alive here. I'm gonna dab out that dark area. All right, let's grab a little dark paint here for the, the top of our dome. And just a quick brush mark there. We grab just some burnt sienna, just something to liven it up a little bit. All right, we'll keep working here. Now, I may grab my larger brush here. This brush is a little small to keep working on this building here, so I'm gonna make my life a little bit easier. Let's grab a larger brush. Let's see if we can't do this in one, one good stroke. Again, just trying to mix up somewhat of a warm, dark mixture. Ooh, that's kind of a green. And I kind of, I like the way that looks. Let's just, just pull it through there. Got to remember that potentially over here, there's going to be a umbrella. So I want to keep that in mind. All right, I've got this building on the right that's kind of back in the distance here. I want to keep this fairly light. So I'm going to make a pretty watery mixture. And I'm just going to leave a paint like that. Kind of give it a, a sort of a skyscraper feel. And just sort of let that kind of bleed off into the distance there. All right, and we'll do, we'll get some thicker, warmer paint there for the top. Oof, need that to be a little not so yellow. And just add a few accents here and there, no big deal. Okay, now let's work on that umbrella area. Now, as I get towards the bottom of my building, I want to get darker with my paint just to help create that, that, that contrast between the light areas I leave behind and the, those white spots that we um, we left behind on that first wash as well, right? I really wanna get that contrast in there. So I'm gonna to start to darken things up. I'm also gonna make sure that I am leaving gaps of light here, leaving gaps of light, always, always, always. All right, we're getting darker, we're getting darker. Pull that over there. I am going to do a line underneath this umbrella here. I want to make sure that we kind of enclose that shape there. All right, I'm just moving that brush along. Okay. Now, this is gonna this is gonna be the fun part. This is where we're going to try try to turn some of these blobs into cars and other little things down here, all right? So, before we do that, I do wanna come through here. I'm gonna grab some dark pigment and just add a few details here. And I wanna do this while this building is still wet, just so they can kind of fade off, right? I don't want too much too many sharp uh, images, or sharp lines, I should say, just because I want this building to kind of push itself back a little bit. I don't really like the pattern I did there, but that's okay. They're gonna soften up, you're gonna hardly see them. I just wanna add a little bit of variation in there, and I may even just take some water here and just plop it down over there. It won't make a difference now, but it will start to create some color variation later on. Okay. All right. Now let's get down to the fun stuff. So in order to build vehicles, I need some really thick paint. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have vehicles and cars on the left. And we're going to focus figures on the right. So I'm going to grab some lavender here. And I'm going to just paint right right underneath here. 
And what this is supposed to simulate, those light spots are supposed to simulate the, the windshields of cars. Oops, dropped my brush. All right, now that lavender is gonna be the back of a vehicle, but I need it to fade to dark, right? As we get lower towards the ground, <clears throat> it's gonna get darker and we're gonna have a shadow with some tires. Do that. Yeah, let's do that, but again, don't get too caught up here with trying to make the perfect vehicle. What's important is that it is strong, the paint is very thick, and it creates a lot of contrast there. Okay, you're gonna see me come through here, and I'm just, you know what, watch this. We're gonna take that dark paint, and I'm just gonna make some, make some marks through there. And very slowly, we're going to build this up into what could be a whole street scene here. I'm going to create another something like that. Oops, I need that to be darker. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. And put some tires and things there. Yep. All right, like that. Okay, now let's work on a little bit of a shadow tone here. I want to keep it warmer, but I need to have <clears throat> some bit of, of kind of a, just a line underneath these, these cars here, or what I'm trying to create the impression of, which are cars. It helps sort of cement it to the ground, right? Again, just poking the brush, letting it do its thing here. All right, let's add some figures in here. Let's add some figures. I wanna be really strong with the paint. Again, do not add water when you're doing this. I'm gonna create a figure there. I'm gonna create one there. I wanna create a powerful one too here. And I need maybe some Chinese white here I can Maybe do a larger one up front that'll kind of kind of draw the viewer's attention in a little bit. Grab some of that dark paint there. Again, I'm just trying to move that brush quickly. Right? I want to suggest what's there. I don't want to paint perfectly what's there. These are some faces on some of these folks. And again, I'm going to work in. Just some legs, and you do not want to paint every, you know, not every person has two legs. Some of them are going to have one and the impression of another. Really want to lean on that impressionistic side of things. It will, it will really help you out. All right, let's get some of that burnt sienna. Put that in there for a face. Maybe a little hair. Okay, let's draw some figures underneath the umbrella back there. Again, I'm just gonna pick up dark paint. I'm just reaching in my palette, just pulling some different things out. Maybe put one between the car, get some more dark paint, and just pull some legs down. Now, what you'll notice is that color is really not important. Okay, what matters is the contrast. We're going for very dark paint. I want to have some variation in the colors that I'm using, but again, I, I'm not thinking color as I, as I do this exercise. Let's get some really dark red there, and we can throw that maybe under that umbrella, help it pop a little bit, and maybe we'll put some over there too. A little symmetry. All right, and let's come in here too. We could add some, some tail lights of these cars. Might be kind of fun. Okay, and slowly, we're starting to come together here. Now, something that's a little bit different in this painting is the fact that everything is pushed really far back. It's a very large street here, and so I need to add some, some shapes that are a bit closer towards us. Before I do that, though, I'm gonna try to throw down a shadow here. Can make this a bit watery. And just 
just it does not need to be much, but just something to to kind of glue these folks down. And those shadows are a bit too thick, I think, but yeah, something like that is fine. And we'll be coming back with some gouache here too, and that'll really help bring out our, our figures. I want to grab some Chinese white if I can. It's always a tough paint to pull. And add some more there to the shirt area. I might throw a jacket or something there. What I want to get is, is maybe a figure that's a bit closer here, sort of walking into the scene. I think it'll help create some more interest. This is going to be tricky, though. Um, hopefully we get it right. But we're just going to go for it. I need something thick. I'm just going to go right for the torso. And this is wet up here, so it's going to be very soft up top. But as long as it's strong down low, it should read well enough. All right. Um, let's just go for it. Yep. Okay. There's the torso. And I'm going to get some blue. I don't know. Maybe there's some blue jeans on or something. And kind of draw that forward there. Something like that. Got a figure walking. Let's throw that shadow down there. Something right like that. Okay, I think that I think that turned out okay. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> it's very soft up here, so I'm not going to bother with trying to put a, a face or anything there. Uh, not until that's dry. I'm going to put a little. Yeah, you know, it could be a hand or something. Let's take this palette knife. Maybe scratch a, a shirt through there. Okay. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right. What else do we want? Do I want to add maybe one larger car up front here? I'm kind of tempted. I just feel like everything is pushed so far back in here. I'm going to overlay. I'm going to throw a taxi right here. Okay. I just got that yellow ochre. I'm going to add some neutral tint here. It'll get darker as it moves down. I want that line to be very, very small below the car. What I mean by line, I mean the, the shadow line. I don't like how central that vehicle is, but um, I think it's fine. It needs to be a little bit bigger, perhaps. Maybe something like that. And then I need to try and... We don't have a windshield here. Hmm. How do I want to do that? That's an interesting problem. We're adding this car late. And you always need to have a highlight on the roof, but we don't really have one. Let's do... Let's try this. Grab some water here. I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a puddle of water there up top. I actually could go with a dark windshield, but and I'm just gonna dry it off like that. And you know what? That may end up working just fine. While this is still wet, I'm gonna break one of my rules here. I rarely ever add gouache while a painting is is still wet, but just to get some of that. That white there for a windshield. I'm going to throw some gouache right on top of it. And just kind of let that be, I think. Maybe some mirrors on the side. I will right, we'll add that sort of darker grill thing. I forgot we need to add that for our other vehicles too. <clears throat> Add that, and I'll go straight in for that orange, and we'll make an impact there. Much better, much better. All right, we're coming along here. I'll grab some more of that Chinese white. These characters back here are just, they're too dark in color. 
I need some some things to break it up. I'm gonna do something over here, maybe. Maybe maybe there too. Okay. For now, I think this is good. We're gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back and we're gonna finish everything up. All right, we're back, ready to finish this painting up. First thing we're gonna do is, I don't know if you remember, but we need to add the indication of a face on our, our figure we added here. Now, I always will start lower with the face than, than I think it needs to be, just because I can always raise it up. But sometimes, <clears throat> if you start too high, it can look really strange. I'm going to add just some pure neutral tint here for his, his jacket. Again, just working on getting that, that contrast built up there. And again, I think I may have gone too high with the head, so I'll move up the shoulders there. Okay, that looks fine. We're going to add some, some stronger paint, vertical lines and things. Maybe even a few more just odds and ends in the background here. Again, just that dark paint, it just creates that contrast. You're going to hear me say contrast a thousand times, but it, it's what you need in order to create a, an interesting and, and uh, an image with some depth to it. I'm just going to pick up some of this dark mixture here and just maybe do a couple of kind of suggestion lines for our, our architecture here in the background. Nothing too strong. Just a suggestion. All right. And I am also, I'm gonna grab some of this pure lavender here to, to try and brighten up this person a little bit. Unfortunately, I mixed that paint, it got a little dark. All right, and I need some strength here. Darken up the pants a little bit as well. Just a touch though. Okay. What else do we want to add? Before I add our highlights, let's, um, I don't know if I want to add a, a roof accent there. Mm. I'm going to soften that just a touch. Okay. You gotta be careful. You don't want to overdo it. It's it's really hard not to, though. I'll be honest. Okay. Let's uh, let's add our highlights here. That is the most fun part. Okay. All right. As always, I've got my white titanium gouache here. If you don't have some gouache, you need to get some. A lot of the best watercolor artists in the world. Have a little assortment of gouache that they'll use. I'm just going to add some highlights there. And what it does is it just helps separate all the tones we have that are laying on top of one another, right? We've got these figures are a little bit darker than the, the tones behind them, but not enough to really make them pop. And that's, that's what your gouache is for. Right. Looks like there's a something happened there, but you know what? I kind of like that. Eh, maybe not. Anytime you get a little variation, it's always nice, but that looked a little bit strange. There we go. That looks very nice. All right. Let's add a little highlight on top of our, our cars here. A few more shoulders, maybe a, I don't know, a, a vertical line there. Something on top of the umbrella. Maybe an invisible person over there. Okay. I think that looks very nice. Let's sign it and we'll talk about what we did well and what we could have done better. All right, let me spray this. Overall, I, I think this is, a, this is a nice looking painting. I know I haven't done a cityscape in a while. Uh, it's always nice to mix up the subjects that you're painting so you don't get too burnt out. I've been doing some Western stuff lately, but I, I really do like going back to the cities and the, 
not even cities and landscapes for me. It's really just the cityscapes. That was the first subject that I really focused on learning to paint, and it's still probably my favorite. You know, there's something about painting a city that's got some action in it. You can kind of envision the sounds and the smells, and I don't know, something I enjoy painting. All right, so what did we do not so well? Let's start there. Um, first thing for me, this tower here, the tone is is too similar to our, our main building here. It's it's the exact same. Um, and, and I need that to be lighter to push that depth back. This should have been a closer in tone to this building we have here. Just that tad bit of lightness, it just helps push back the building and, and it definitely needs it. Um, let's see. I think our I think our building looks nice here. I, I really had fun abstracting and just leaving all these white highlights. It's amazing how your brain just, it just fills it in. You know, we gave it a couple of things up front, this big taxi, this, this individual walking across and this figure, and then it kind of just knows, oh, those are more cars and people back there. You need one kind of key image to let the brain know what it is, and then it, it automatically just sort of assimilates that with, with everything else. Um, I think our umbrella turned out nice. I, I would have liked to have maybe done some negatively painted people. All of these are positively painted. And what I mean by that is we physically took dark paint and put it down instead of using dark paint to cut around shapes. I would have liked to, to mix that up a little bit, but I think our figure turned out nice over here, walking across, taxi looks good. Yeah, everything looks nice. So if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it and I hope you learned something. If you really like this piece, all of my artwork is for sale in my store, the link for which is in the description. And above all else, just remember to keep on painting. Thanks.